Hi guys, this is Scott with TubeTape.com. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to key out green screen footage using FX Home's Composite Lab. So I have the main screen open here, and the first thing that we need to do is we're going to go ahead and import some footage in the background. So let's do that. Um, I've got some uh, test footage here. Let's go ahead and we'll pull in that one. Okay, now let's go ahead and get a background. This is kind of a fun Star Trek thing we've been playing around with. All right, so now that I've got my two pieces of media, one being the foreground footage, the other one's just a still, uh, which is the background. It's a little spaceship I'm gonna put these people in. I'll drop that on the canvas, and then I'll go ahead and on top of that, I'm gonna drop the uh, green screen footage. You can't see the background now because the green screen footage is on top of it, but when we key out the screen, the background will show through. And to accomplish that, what you're going to want to do is go under this test footage section, and here under the mat area, you'll click on this key, and what it'll do is it'll bring up all the key filters. Um, there's a number of different ones that are in here. Uh, the chroma key is very popular, but actually which, what I found works best with some really good green screen footage is to use this auto color difference filter. I'll click that. And as you can see, just by clicking the auto color difference filter, it automatically knew to key out the green, and it's done a pretty good job. Now there is some fringing, um, a little bit of green still left here. So what you can do is, is a couple different options. You can use some of these slider buttons, the user detail, the user gray, and the threshold. Um, slide those around a little bit, and you can see that the key's improving. The other thing that's going to take care of all this spill is to go ahead and put a spill suppression filter on there. And you'll find the spill suppression filter under the grade section here. Let's go ahead and we'll click it. There it is. It's automatically set to green, so you'll see as soon as I click it, the green's gone away. Sometimes though, what will happen is this filter will take out some of the saturation of the color and you need to adjust the transparency a little bit. You can see this has kind of become purple and some of the color's gone. To correct that, we're just going to go ahead and move this to here. And you can see the color comes back. The other thing that you might want to do when you're compositing, matching these two pieces of footage, uh, it's a good idea to blur the background a little bit. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll select this background layer and I'll pick a grade filter from here and I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur and as you can see it's blurred the background that might be a little too much blur so I'll go ahead and turn that down and eh, maybe a four something like that that gives you kind of a, a depth of field um, really makes it for a better key the other thing that you can do is you can go ahead and play with the light spill filter and you're going to find that under the main test footage section, but click on the composite. And there's the light spill filter. And what the light spill does is it's going to blend the foreground and the background. Uh, you can see if I zoomed in here that it's already started to blend the two uh, layers together. And there's different blending modes. Uh, this is a lighten. You can do a darken. Uh, it really depends on sort of what you're working with and where the lighting should be coming from. You have to think of it as, uh, you know, in this situation, where would the light itself be coming from? But you've got a couple of different options you have to add. But really just sort of selecting the one that seems like it's going to work best. And again, you can adjust the strength of this as well. And as you see, we've got a pretty good key from that. Now I'll go ahead and I'll show you some advanced features of uh, Composite Lab. Uh, I've got a couple pieces of footage that I selected. Let me go ahead and I'll put those on the canvas. I've got a background and a foreground. This is actually somebody that's going to go in a transporter. Let's put that here. Let me size that down a little bit so we can see it better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and key this out. So just like we did before, we'll select the key. I'm going to do this one pretty quick. Auto color difference filter. Now, the problem that you see is we've got this part of the screen, let me turn it off here a second, that wasn't green because the wall wasn't painted. So we've got to 
the way that we're going to take care of that area is we're going to use a garbage mat. Let me show you how that's done. So we go over here, we click garbage mat, and there's a couple of different ones. There's a circle, a square, and a free hand. For something like this, I'll use a square. And all I do is line it up and basically cover the section that I want it to completely key out. So anything that's in that garbage mat section will be keyed. I'm going to uh, go ahead and get another one here and I'm going to do the other side because there's some green that really didn't key that well. So let's just go ahead and mask that as it's the same. Okay, now we'll look at what we've done here. And you can see those sections are now perfectly keyed. Let me correct the key on him a little bit with using the spill suppression. Okay. And that's under the grading section. We'll get the spill suppression, remove the last bit of green that was on there. Now we've got a yeah, much better key. Just like we did last time. The other thing in the grading section is he's a little dark. I'm going to go ahead and lighten that up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to correct the gamma. That'll help lighten it. And you can play around with these, you know, just get it to where it's going to look best. There, just a little bit better. He blends in much better. He's also offset a little bit, so I'm going to move him further back. And the way that you do that is click on animation and then you'll see you've got these handles where you can move him around and go ahead put him back over there okay so he's keyed out uh, we use the garbage mats and that looks pretty good one thing that we can do is we could add a shadow to him that'll really make him look like he's part of the scene and the way that you do that is once you have him keyed out you're gonna to wanna to copy that layer so let's copy this test footage layer I just did a control C, control V, made it easy. I'm going to rename that layer Shadow. Okay, let's just call that Shadow. There you go. Now we're going to do some color grading on the shadow itself because we want to make it black and semi transparent, really kind of a gray transparent. And the way that you do that is you're going to apply a key filter to the shadow layer, uh, something like a brightness or a lightness filter. Let's take this lightness one. I'm actually going to move it to the bottom so the order, the gamma will happen first and the spill suppression and the lightness filter will happen. And I just turn the lightness all the way down. And now we've got this black image which is actually sitting on top of the original image let me move it over a little bit so you can see that there you go so now you've got this black image that we're working with now what you want to do to make it look more like a shadow is you want to go in and adjust the transparency so let's do that and again that's under our grading filters I'll click transparency Again, I'm going to move this one to the bottom of the stack because it's going to apply the filters in order. Okay. And I'll go ahead and I'll turn the transparency down a little bit. As you can see, it's given it now kind of a shadow look. Uh, and you can just play with that, you know, depending on the lighting of your scene, what would be appropriate. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and give that shadow a little bit of a blur. So let's pick like a Gaussian type of blur. And again, I'm just going to move it to the bottom of the stack. And I'm going to blur, increase the strength a little bit. As you can see now, it looks more like a shadow. But let me turn that off a second, bring it back to full so that I can see my shadow a little better. Because uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually move the shadow to put it down onto the floor. Let me show you what I'm talking about. To do that, I'm going to click on the animation. This will bring up our handles here. And let me uh, 
move out from the image a little bit so I can see a little bit better. Now what you're going to do is flip the shadow by grabbing the handle, something like that, and moving it into position. And I'll scale it up a little so you can see a little bit better. And just move it under his feet. There, and we have a shadow. And what you'll see uh, when we render this, the shadow then is actually going to move uh, to his arm movements and give that a look. Let me go ahead and, uh, you know, like he's really connected into the scene. Let's go ahead and put our Gaussian blur back on. Go back under our grading filters. And just blur that up a little bit. A lot of this is just trial and error. You just have to play with it and sort of decide what's going to look the most realistic. Anyway, there you go. Let me go ahead and run this for you. You can see what the end result looks like.